Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial. I'm Renault from our mountains and today we're gonna see how to create keys, doors and chests in the Corgi Engine. So to start things off uh, we can have a look at the new demo that showcases keys and doors and stuff. Uh, it's called Features Keys and it's located under Demos and Minimal. And if I press if I press play, uh, you'll see how it goes. So I have my rectangle character here and here is a yellow door. As you can see when I walk up to it, uh, there's nothing I can do. But if I grab the yellow key and come back, the door opens. Um, if I look at my sorry inventory, uh, I still have two yellow keys left because the, the picker I grabbed uh, contained three keys. Uh, here's another door, but this one is uh, button activated. So uh, if I press A, the door opens and I only have one key left. I can also, uh, using the engine, create different type of keys uh, that open different sort of things. So uh, here's a ruby key that opens the red door. And um, as you can see, I don't have any ruby key on me anymore. I can't open that one, but if I grab another ruby key, as you can see, uh, it goes into my inventory and I can open it. And lastly, here's a chest. So uh, in my inventory right now, I only have a key, but if I open the chest, you can see that I now have a chicken, uh, some coins, and I don't have a key anymore because I just used one. So uh, yeah, that's the end of the demo level. Um, so really, um, based on the introduction of the inventory engine in version 4.0 of the Corgi engine, uh, you can now create, collect, and use keys. They're just really inventory items uh, that combine with a few new components uh, that you can add on your scene elements will allow you to interact with doors, open chests, as you've just seen, uh, loot their contents, and really generally activate stuff in your scenes. Um, let's see how it goes in details. So first of all, uh, let's create a new key. If you're familiar with the inventory engine, this will be really easy. If not, you really, really should check out its documentation because it's exactly the same thing. So to create a new key, um, and we're gonna call it the tutorial key. Um, I want to be into the resources folder and I go create more mountains. Corgi engine, inventory engine key. And so uh, I call it tutorial key. Uh, then I need to uh, set an item ID. Uh, I'm going to stay uh, with tutorial key. I want it to go into my main inventory. I want it to be usable because every time I'm, I use the key I want to, uh, to have it destroyed basically. Um, here's some info that will get displayed uh, when I display the inventory. Uh, a key to stuff and um, what else all that is fine I don't have a uh, tutorial key image so uh, it's just gonna be I'm afraid uh, the regular key icon that way you can you can follow at home um, the prefab drop will get to that and uh, the rest maybe in a maximum stack we can have like five keys uh, in one slot and the rest is just it's just fine so all that's left to do is to create um, an item picker for for that uh, new tutorial key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a sprite. Um, not sure which one. You know I'm gonna take the uh, the picker for the bullets because it's blue, and uh, so it will be different from the the other keys. Um, and what I want to do is basically just replicate you know what I have here so uh, I'm gonna need a box collider 2d an item picker and uh, potentially a pickable item so I take a box collider 2d um, set it to his trigger I add an item picker to it and in this item picker I'm gonna drag um, the scriptable object I just I just created uh, which is tutorial key and I want when I 
pick that item, I want to grab five keys, five blue keys. Uh, and um, yeah, I can also have a pickable item on it that will, you know, play an effect, uh, the coin effect maybe, coin burst, and a sound, uh, stick with coin. All right, so uh, if I press play, if I look at my inventory, it's empty, and uh, if I grab my picker item, I now have five tutorial keys. We have our new key, we are now gonna need a door. Uh, I'm gonna remove some of that stuff because, you know, it's confusing. Um, let's just get rid, you know, of the, the yellow key, or maybe move it around. Um, so we want to create a new door. Uh, if we look at the existing one, like this uh, minimal yellow door, uh, you can see that it's basically a moving platform and it also has a key operated zone. And that, that's exactly what we're gonna create. So I'm gonna need, um, I'm gonna need a door somewhere. Uh, blocks, that's where I wanna go. And I'm gonna try to find the blue one. Yeah, maybe that one. It's supposedly a one-way platform, but um, you know what? Oh, I'm really bad at rotation. Yay! Uh, and uh, make it big. Okay. So this is this is gonna be my door. I'm gonna make it. A moving platform like that. Uh, I'm gonna add a rigid body 2D to it. I'm gonna add a box collider 2D and I'm gonna add a moving platform script to it. I want it to cycle only once because I open the door and it remains open uh, in the ascending way. Um, how many path elements? Maybe two then I can just, you know, uh, if you've already created moving platforms, this is nothing new to you, but uh, you can just drag and, and drop the, the little path elements. Uh, movement speed, make it maybe 10, uh, with some is out, and the rest I can leave like that. So if I press play and move, you know what, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna do uh, this. So if I press play, my moving platform goes up because it's a moving platform. And if I just here select script activated, uh, I'm now telling my moving platform actually not to move on start. And it will now wait uh, for me to open the door using a script. And that's what we're gonna do now. So we have a door but we don't really have like lock uh, yet. And uh, to do so, we are gonna create an activation zone that will uh, interact with our key. It's actually somewhere, some place where we can put our key. Um, I'm gonna call it the, the, the blue door and I'm gonna nest my new game object under it. Uh, and I'm gonna move it over there and add a box collider 2D to it. Uh, I think it has to be East Trigger. Yeah, it does. And um, I'm gonna call it my um, blue door key operated zone. And just like that, I'm gonna add a key operated zone component to it. Uh, I want to um, define the, the size of my collider here so that way my, my character ju can just walk up to it and uh, interact with it so it has to be big enough but you know it I put it in front of the door but uh, for some reason you could have like a lever here and when you go to the lever it opens that door so really it's the possibilities are endless and, and you can do most of what you can see uh, in, in most games so uh, from the key operated zone 
uh, panel here in the inspector, I can set a few things. Um, first of all, I can decide whether or not it, uh, it's button activated because this class just extends the button activated class that you may be familiar with. Um, so I can say whether or not it requires that ability, uh, whether or not it's auto activated. And then uh, I can set a number of activation. Right now it's unlimited, but I could decide that uh, you can only activate that door once. Uh, if there were like uh, maybe five activations, I could have a delay between uses. Maybe you have to wait two seconds uh, before activating it again, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that. And um, then I have a visual prompt, so I can decide uh, that uh, if it's not uh, auto-activated, I want to press a button. And in that case, maybe I want to always show the prompt. So uh, let's press play and uh, see that's the prompt. Uh, right now it's in always show uh, mode, but if I uh, uncheck that and um, say maybe show prompt when colliding instead, um, if I go into my zone, uh, the prompt pops up. If I go out, you know, it hides. Uh, I can define its position and stuff, and then I can say, okay, uh, this one requires a key. So, um, Maybe what we can uh, try first is, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with the uh, tutorial key. I think that's the name I gave it. Um, and then the last thing we need to do is bind our moving platform to it. We want to say that, okay, when we uh, put the key and you know all the conditions match, uh, you have the required abilities and stuff, you want to open the door. So to do that, uh, I'm gonna add to the list here. It creates this thing. And I'm just gonna drag the blue door here and select uh, its open function. So uh, I think it's authorized movement right here because uh, authorized movement on moving platforms that are script operated will, uh, as you can guess by the name of the method, authorize the movement. And, and uh, as it's a moving platform that is like only once, it will start moving and stop there. Uh, let's give it a try. So uh, I think I, I set it as a required, uh, required key. So I'm gonna need to grab my key here and I just pressed uh, space uh, to, to jump and it opened the door. Um, let's see what else we can do uh, using this key operated zone. Um, we can say it doesn't require a key. Uh, and that way you can just have, you know, if you don't care about keys, you, you just have, you know, uh, things where you press the button and it opens the door. All right. Um, we can also say that it's auto activated. So then, and if it's auto activated, I, I don't want to show the prompt. Uh, if it's auto activated, I can just uh, go there. Well, I, I'm going to need a key, right? And it opens. So, yeah, uh, pretty easy to create doors. Uh, one thing I just realized is that my, my door is doing weird stuff, but um, as you can see, it's behaving weirdly. That's because uh, in the rigid body 2D here, you need to set it to kinematic. If you do that and uh, try the game again, it's much better. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we've seen how to uh, create keys, how to create uh, doors uh, using the same system. Basically, um, once you've created your, your key operated zone, your lock, um, you can associate really anything to it. So you could have a door move, you could have um, enemy spawn, you can have, it's just something that you trigger, something you that happens when the, when the player uh, puts the good key or the good, gives the good item to a uh, character. Really, it's, it's just endless possibilities. Um, in that scene, you'll also find an example of a chest. Uh, it's exactly the same thing. So you have an object that you trigger. In this case, it's this inventory engine chest uh, component here, and you have a key operated zone. Uh, and this one, as you can see, um, is bound to the chest and to its uh, open chest method. 
and what the open chest method does is that it takes all the item pickers that you've added to the chest so in this case these two components uh, and one of them contains a coin the other one contains a chicken and it adds them to your inventory so that's it just another example uh, you can have also uh, moving platforms that are more complex um, and really anything can be bound to this system as long as it has a public method that you can call and that will do things um, and the things you want to uh, when you when you activate the key all right uh, that concludes this tutorial about keys and chests and stuff i hope you learned something new today and i'll see you next time bye